Project 1.1, ACES Nightlight. This project explores different types of variable resistors, primarily a light-dependent resistor and a potentiometer. The main components of this circuit are the 2N3904 transistor, the potentiometer, and the light-dependent resistor. The transistor has three pins, the emitter, the base, and the collector. It allows current to flow through the collector to the emitter when there is a small amount of voltage on the base pin, therefore acting as an automatic switch. The potentiometer is a voltage divider controlling whether the circuit is active as a regular two LED parallel circuit or a circuit dependent on exterior conditions. As a variable resistor, it has a range between 0 and 10,000 ohms of resistance. For the purpose of this project, it was referred to as the test point marked by the TP dot on the diagram. The light dependent resistor is a variable resistor that controls where current goes from the test point. Its main properties a resistance ranging from 1 million ohms in darkness to 0 ohms in daylight. Its purpose was to force current into the transistor protected by 10,000 or 22,000 ohms of resistance when it receives voltage during darkness. This is the circuit diagram the nightlight is based on. Not including the wires, there are a total of 8 components shown on the diagram. 9 to 12 volts of power, the potentiometer, the LDR, two fixed resistors, the transistor, and two LEDs. The test point is how the circuit's automatic components operate. If the potentiometer is grounding, it's power, there is no voltage in the test point, and the circuit operates as if Q1 was just a wire and ignores R1, R2, and R3. However, if the test point has voltage, the current goes through the path of least resistance. The resistance in R2 is greater than the resistance in R3. The circuit's power is put into the transistor as a switch, activating the LEDs. Otherwise, if the resistance of R3 is greater than the resistance of R2, the current's path of least resistance passes through the LEDs, leaving them off. Building the circuit on the custom breadboard requires soldering and very precise solder joints since they're close together. Using heat for too long while soldering could ruin some of the components, such as the transistor and the potentiometer. However, if they're still able to produce resistance after soldering, they are good. Thank you for listening.